Let's get to the bottom of this one. I spot the truth that I miss one. Tap into the minds of the people. Rather acknowledge before I dismiss one. Atheists, Muslim, Christians, Buddhists, they all got usage. All got perspective. It's a collective. Get to the bottom of the truth is. With our hearts uncovered. Boy, you be tossing all of the lies you smother. When them tries to kill you. Boy, faith you recover. Yeah. Pull off the makeup. We finna take off. Never said it'd be a cakewalk. Meditate till we charge up. That's who goes regardless. Castle, find my pineal. Breaking language barriers, we saw millennials. Planets passing, edge rotations. Down me, we all. So down me, we know. Sometimes we can't be slow, that's why my ears open. Every drop you add could complete the ocean. Speak up, play your part too. Been vulnerable, it's a hard tool. Reflect on all the juice like torture. It's on you, tell the truth. Hi everybody, I'm Kimberly the Unseen Twisted Truth. We are the People's Podcast. And um, I have my co-host, Henry. Hello, how you doing? Hi. Running around, I jumped in. No, listen, I am so behind. Oh, way. But it's okay, because I was trying to do this video. But anyways, at the end of the day, I, we got Holly, and then we got um, Terrell, uh, t Real. Welcome to the show, guys. Can you hear us, Whoa. both of you? Holly, can you hear us? I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Right. So, before we get into the um, show to talk about you guys and stuff like that, I want to talk about something that's um, happened. So, um, for us in Pontiac, we lost somebody important. Um, it was Bupak, um Shakir. He did the, uh, he's a vigilante that catch, caught all the child predators and stuff like that. I seen it. So, um, I want to play a tribute song really quick for him and his family and stuff like that because, I mean, he was trying to do something good. I, I, I get all of it and how, you know, it could have been handled differently. But, hey, it's one person trying to, trying to stop a bunch. So, um, I want to I play this song real quick just to, in memories of, and he's been on our podcast before and stuff like that. And I personally know him. So, I just want to um, give a little bit of a tribute if you guys don't mind. Nah. Right. Do that. ...was shot and killed at Universal Coney Island in Pontiac last night. I talked to a lot of victims, and they appreciate what I do. That was Robert Lee back in January. He really changed a lot of lives. He really cared about the kids of the community. He wanted to keep everyone's kids safe. He really cared about this city a lot. Just honorable man. Just honorable man. Let me tell you about my brother, a hero was took from us A wild motherfucker, never scared to bring the ruckus We was on top of the world, we would swear they couldn't touch us And you'd never get my dog if I was there, you motherfuckers Can't explain the type of hurt that I got aching in my soul And you can't tell me this the way that this shit was supposed to go How could you take our Batman, the city's golden hope What the fuck are me and Cardi supposed to do without our bro? People say over time that things will always get better I'm pouring out this handy crime boom pop forever They say Why weren't you with him man? Why'd they have to take my dough? Carry your mission even if we do the right thing wrong Fuck Sheriff Bouchard Who ain't never blaming innocent Y'all don't even follow up on evidence You're ignorant Fuck the police cause they don't care about the little kids Y'all just let these pedals thrive and that's the world we're living in They don't like the way we did this shit but you ain't some hypocrites Y'all don't even wanna lock the pedals up a little bit Wait till your kid meets with the prep we caught you didn't get It's easy to criticize when you sitting from a distance bitch People say over time that things will always get better I'm pouring out this handy crime boom pop forever saying, Why weren't you with him, man? Why'd they have to take my dog? We'll carry your mission even if we do the right thing wrong 
won't ever be forgotten here in Pontiac, my brother. Never. Rest in peace to Bupak and rest in peace to Cutter. When somebody start to come up here, they take him from us. This ain't fair, why the fuck my favorite city gotta suffer? Bupak exposed over 132 pedophiles. And there ain't a pedo hunter in the world with a better style. But we got Dap and they some soldiers know the mission carries on. R.I.P. Black Batman, Pontiac's very own. Rest in peace. People say over time that things will always get better. Pouring out this handy crime, boo pie forever. Why weren't you with him, man? Why'd they have to take my dog? We'll carry a mission even if we do the right thing wrong. And off for days, shit just can't be real. How the fuck they take my doggy? He ain't even get his meal. I look fine, but eyes can lie, and mine can hide the way I feel. But inside, I'm fucking dying, I can't even watch on reels. Footage gang 248, that's the insta of the fucking go. Get that shit a million followers, get every bread exposed. If I ever make a milli, give your kids a hundred thou. And if I'm lying, I hope Cardi find my house and dumb me down. Some bullshit, man. We lost a hero. A real ass live hero. This man was out here protecting our kids. This was one of the best friends I ever had. I only knew him for a little over a year, but he went out of his way for me all the time. And he did that for everybody. He cared about everybody. Show some love. Thank you to everybody that came out to the vigil. One love. One love. One love. One love. One love. One love. I appreciate that, you guys. I've heard a lot about Bupak, right? Guy, you know, more so recently. And it's a shame you didn't get so much claim. I know people that you could say one way or the other, but uh, it's a large body count for exposing people who are hurting children. So, not only that, um, like I, it's crazy because I've seen that um, dads against predators first, and then shortly I, that's exactly how he got started by seeing them. Because he saw somebody right up at, they got, they caught somebody at Great Lakes Crossing. And I was like, it's crazy to see that that mall was like one of the biggest places that pedophiles go to, like, prey on kids. So, the first person he caught was like right on, like, right around the most popular streets in Pontiac, Baldwin. And, like Trajan area, like real close to Oakland. I, I know that when I when I lived in Pontiac, I was real close to that area when I first moved there. So um, he caught that dude, and he ain't stopped from there. He just kept going. It was like he got smarter as he went along. He tried to protect himself because people were telling him like you playing a real dangerous game, and the police not backing you up. city as a whole county as a state people got to look at that because now it's like i heard people from that's not even in this country doing reports about that yep. so it's not that that shit didn't reach people it's not that that shit didn't like really affect. it's not that he didn't do his job it's the fact that he did his job now it ain't nobody here to do that shit well, look up a red dot. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm not saying get it in. I think it's not busting. Um, it is what it is. All right, I muted him for a second. He doesn't realize that we're um in the middle of a conversation. He just joined. He's still <sighs> talking, but I'm gonna unmute him so he can talk. Okay. <laughs> you real OG? What's up, man? <laughs> but I get you want to introduce yourself? Him? Yeah, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is, is T-Real. Uh, my real name is T-Real. Uh, I'm, um, I'm a good person, good good dude. By trade, I'm like a diesel technician. I work on cars and stuff for, for a living, though. 
but I also make some dope ass music, man. I make some fire ass music. I've been doing it for years. Um, a lot of the times I'm, I'm shy about my music, or I just don't want to just share it with people because they ain't ready for it. Because I don't make music that's that's uh, mainstream commercial cap rap. No, you and, certainly um, don't. <laughs> if somebody if somebody say something stupid, I'm just like, dog, I stand on my shit. And I don't be like wanting to argue about dumb shit because people be so damn stupid these days, man. It's like they don't say any motherfucking thing, man. And, and they got no 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 accountability for nothing to come out their mouth, man. Nothing. So you just, he's like, this dude, he trying to commit suicide, son, because he just talking that way. So I'm not finna kill this nigga. I'm finna not even talk to this person. Because I be feeling that way. I be feeling like some people be trying to actually kill themselves. And, and they don't want to do it, so they want somebody else to do it. So they just keep talking. You know? that's, that's that's real that you say that because this right here my mentor y'all this is this is one of my mentors right here this is my main mentor this is the owner of all these jaguars we over here this is son right here don don raised dog we on the podcast man i told you i was gonna do that too so we just were talking about we were just talking about someone that got shot and killed from pontiac yeah before you showed up yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you though, okay? Until we get back to you. You ain't gotta mute me. I mean, yes, I do. All right, thank you. We gotta introduce the lovely Holly here. Well, not only that, I don't I don't really care to hear what he's talking about on this job. But anyhow, nonetheless, we're gonna talk about still building. Um, Holly's been through some things. And Holly came back hard, and I'm proud of Holly. Like, I'm proud of you, girl. <laughs> Thank you. Tell everybody about you and what you've been through, and, and what do you do? So, I, for a big part of my life, I lived in Port Huron, and I didn't want to raise my kids there. It was too racist. Okay. So, I have four children of my own. Um, and then I have, when I, my two older children have the same father, and then my two younger children have the same father. When I got with my two younger children, I adopted his oldest daughter. So I actually have five children. And there, three of them are grown, actually four now, because my daughter's in college. So um, I have, tw my niece is 27. She's the one I adopted. And then I have, I have Martel. He's an artist. He's 25. And I have Dakota, he's 24. Then I have my daughter, Jolie, she's 18. And my son, um, Dre, he's 15. Dre, my kids are very successful. Um, and that's because of the kind of mother I am. I've been a single mother for 25 years. Oh, and I run a hospital in downtown Detroit. I'm their chief operating officer. And my children, my daughter, she graduated from high school. She has a 4.4. And my younger son, he's on a full ride at Detroit Country Day for football. And um, I run a tight, I'm a no-nonsense kind of girl. I run a tight shift here. Um, sometimes I choose to keep my mouth quiet. And, you know, I have my opinions of things. And sometimes reality hurts people's feelings. So I don't have very many friends. Um, I have like four. Mm -hmm. And I have a, I'm single. I don't like choose, I don't know, I guess for a really long time I broke up with a guy and I didn't want a man in my household for, cause I wanted my children to, I didn't want the arguing and the fighting. And then it was like, I don't know if it was the style of man that I date or what it was, but I didn't want it here in the house. I wanted my house peaceful. It's a sanctuary here. So my son, my oldest son, he's living here with his girlfriend. And I told him, if y'all want to get into an argument, y'all need to get in the car and go two miles up the road because ain't no argument here. So I, I like my peace. It's very peaceful here. My house is, I have three dogs and, and my younger son, you wouldn't even know it. It's so quiet here. Uh, so, um, and I have overcame a lot. I've overcame a lot. I, I suffer from bipolar, so... I mean, like a depression. I wouldn't call it bipolar, but depression from time to time. So uh, I try to speak about that so people know that it's okay and there's help out there. I had postpartum when I was younger. I had my kid, my oldest kids I had when I was 18. 
and I had postpartum and no one was treating it and I was wild. I was wild. I, I've been in 37 fist fights. And because I didn't have no one to help me figure out what was going on with me. So then once I moved out here, I was like, you got to change your life if you want your kids to be successful because they're going to follow in your footsteps. So I changed my life because of that. And I want to speak about that Pontiac incident because when we lived in Port Huron, we had a cat that we all ran with. His name was Kevin Lewis. We called him K. Lou. He was actually really good friends with Bootsy, who has introduced me to you. And he went out to Pontiac to do a weed deal. He sold weed. And they murdered him. And so because of that, I won't go to Pontiac. <laughs> nah, K. Lou got murdered. I ain't going there. And I really don't go there at all. And I didn't realize the problem they were having with sex trafficking. I mean, but the truth is, is it's bad. It's, it's bad everywhere. Here. Yeah. In Ohio right now, they have a thousand missing kids from one city. And I said, how? How did this happen? I'm disappointed in the police. Like, this has to be an inside job. How How are a thousand kids missing from January in one city in Ohio? I, I can't even believe it. I'm, I'm just mind blown by it. Well, after, I, after I seen that movie, Room that was basically loosely based off the Ariel Castro um, yeah. situation where three girls were caught in their teens and spent the next 10 years in somebody's basement. Two of them had kids with them. Yeah. 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 So it's not It's something that's taken very serious, but people take it, like, so serious that they don't talk about it. And if it ain't talked about, then ain't nothing done about it. Yeah, unless it's in prison. That's where the, you know, it, we leave it up to the other inmates. Well, that's the thing. Prisoners prisoners don't have, prisoners don't have rights. And that's basically how I live my life. It's like kindergarten rules until people don't listen and then there's prison rules like oh. you shouldn't have to tell an adult some things and those are one of the things unspoken rules yeah right, right. universal truth so mm -hmm. when i when i look at the fact like okay i'm not calling cps that leave you two options be batman or be a civilian and okay. there's way more civilians than it is batman because you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain. I'm taking Holly with me. You <laughs> can <laughs> We got to do Batman shit, right? Well, <laughs> that's just like what Holly said is what I stand on. And that's what a bunch of people have to individually do. It's not about it. A community is based off people taking their skills and running it up. Not somebody waiting on one leader to tell you you can do it. It has to be a collective. We have to collectively start tackling this problem as civilians, becoming more than that to, to do it. Because you're right, I, the police aren't doing anything about it. Or what? Well, uh, here in Detroit, they got 180. They put a sting together and got out and recovered 187 kids. But no. you're Cleveland, Ohio. This is one city with a thousand missing kids since January. Right. There's a problem. You know what the main issue is, though? And I'm going to cut down to the bottom thing. It's not the fact that um, oh, people are taking children. That might be the issue. But the thing is, the main issue is nobody wants to come together and unify anymore to do anything good. They'll come together and unify when it comes to violence and fighting and whatnot. But they won't come together when it comes to doing good. They're so worried about it's none of their business or... Um, it's not happening to them, so they're not gonna, you know, they're not gonna worry about it. Or it's not my street, it's not my neighborhood. It's your pastor, okay? It is your teacher. It is your father. It is your flipping kid. If you ain't doing the right thing with them, so I mean, for you to say it ain't happening to me, and it ain't in my backyard, that's a lie. That's a lie, because I don't know. I mean, a lot of people that are strong and that have been through things and a lot of people that have grew be through things, they've been touched. <laughs> they've been through things. 
and I was touched. I mean, we people been touched. My own mother touched me when I was younger. Everybody has been touched, and it goes beyond being touched, though. There's a and they call it an illness. It's not an illness. It's acceptable and overlooked, and it's been like that forever. So everybody has to show unity and come together to stop it or it's going to keep going. And the thing is, this whole world's afraid of coming together unless it's on violence. But that's the thing, though. That's exactly what I'm going back to. Because I don't control other people and I stand on what, how is it? I control me. Yeah. So I control no nonsense around me. I, I don't control no community. I'm not even trying to be a leader. If people want to follow me, that's one thing. But no, I'm controlling me. Facts. I'm starting with man in the mirror and what I fucking believe in. If people want to follow that, if people want to collab, that's cool. But people need to get over the fact that it take. That's why Boo Park did what the fuck he did. He ain't wait on nobody to gang up with him. People had to tell him, hey, let me come with you. Hey. Don't use that address. Hey, change your phone number, change your profile, change your fucking YouTube shit. If more people act individually in their life, if you so and I cook and that do defend kids, all of us doing our thing as to the collective. I don't need you around to do my part. I just need you to do your part. Facts, facts. And that's what it is. That's why my next situation ship is going to be a polyamorous one. And I don't care what people say because what I lack, somebody else may have. And I don't care. I don't worry about the wrong things. I'm not into jealousy and stuff. And I think we all have to unify and come together. I think we all have to do it as a collective whole. Not everybody, not everybody can do it all themselves. I think you know who you, um, I think you know what you are to be on this earth. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I know that I ain't meant to be nobody's sister wife. Right. No. I know that. But that's okay because everybody's you know, different. You know right? what I'm saying? But that might not be the same for someone else. Right. I'm not here to, to judge nobody. No. I do, I do do it all. Yeah. You know, I, I don't even know how sometimes how my kids even, I'm still, even though they grown, I still manage a lot of things in their lives. You know, for Tells, I, I really manage a lot of his music career and his videos and everything. That's a whole separate entity entity from having younger kids and, and even my Nisha, the little the girl I adopted, she has two children of her own. And yeah. she's living on her own. She still needs me for things. Mm-hmm. Right. She still looks at me for guidance and she, she they call me for the truth. They, a lot of the times my kids call me for the truth because I'm going to tell them, you know, mama, mama ain't never going to lie to you. But what you did was fucked up. So what I said is that I can't doesn't mean I can't. It means I, I shouldn't. I think we all should come together as a unit, honestly. And, right. and, and I'm not saying that everybody has to become sister wives. That's not that's not it. That's just my right. that's my thing. Family. I'm saying for you. right, and I'm saying that everybody has to look at each other and think. How can we utilize together? When I first met you, I didn't I didn't act like I didn't know you. I act like I knew you forever. Yeah. And that was you the first was time I met you. Are. And actually, Henry, you were there the first time when I met her because you were at the event. Yeah. The first oh, that's event. Right. Yeah. That's the first time I met her. And I sat down there next to her like she was been my friend forever. Because I felt her energy. People are too busy looking with their eyes. And they're going off a of trauma, and they're not looking with their soul, and they're not looking into other souls. Okay. And I think you look at people's children too. Yeah, you, know, you you look at somebody's child, and you're like, damn, who's their mom? I mean, and I told my kids that all day. Like, if you grow up and, and use crack, the first thing they gonna do is blame the mother. Yeah, raise that kid. What kind of household did they live in? Because that's the world we live in. You but know, that's it the might thing, be a, Pardon? No, that's the thing, though. Like, you a mature person, so you've been through life on both sides. You've seen have and have not. And with that, I wouldn't be so quick to judge what that person's past is. I don't know what they, because I know I know some parents that did their thing with their kid, and their kid made choices that ain't, that went totally against how the fuck they was raised. So. Mm-hmm. 
but most people, society say, well, they didn't get their ass or and that's what's they wrong. That's, 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 that's nothing. You know? slave, that slave mentality that go like when she said about the unity being a problem. To me, the first problem is the parenting because where the fuck, how the fuck you don't know where your kids is? How the fuck you don't give a fuck who they talking to? This fight the side, you, say, you don't sound violent. You sound like you actually really give a shit about your kids, and it shows. It's reflective in how they have turned out, obviously. Well, and I'm, I'll tell everybody this. I was a different kind of parent at 18 than I was then. For sure. Yeah, I, I was 17, 18, so I get it. Five years ago. You know what? They really did get their ass whipped because that's how I was raised. Yeah. I was raised very militant, but they got their ass whipped for serious things. Like, you know, they, they set their shoes on fire or, you know, they didn't get their ass whipped if they like took something out the fridge or schoolwork or, or their room wasn't clean. No, in order to get your ass whipped, it was something serious. But I didn't play about my kids and I let people around me know that too. Because when people around you know, I would tell my kids when they would go to hang out with friends, they know your mama crazy, right? Because I wanted them to know that about me because I'm going to come for mine and I'm going to be checking for mine and I'm going to be looking for mine. So don't pull no bullshit on mine. And usually, and that, you know, that really deters, you know, people. It makes them reconsider if they're thinking about doing something, you know, unhumanly like sexual assault or mm -hmm. kidnapping or they're going to think twice because they know I'm going to be over there. And listen, that's what happened with me too because I grew up with my son and Every time he'd been arrested and stuff like that, I only have one, but he acts like when I when he was a youth that I, he was 12, even though I've only had one. Like, he's been arrested more than his ages, and he's 31. So, uh, the cops would, I would talk to him every time. I don't know why. I just happened to call the same time he was getting arrested, always. There's not one time I missed. And, and I have to always talk to all the cops, and they say, Mama Bear's pretty protective, isn't she? I will call and put a... a, a what is that, a PBA or whatever? Is it a bulletin on for him if I cannot figure out where he is? Because at the end of the day, I only had him. And even if I had a bunch, that's my job as a parent. Because I, it was no longer about me once I had a child. And it was my choice to have it young. So with that being said, I had to be different. Even though I, I wasn't the best at young because we grew up together and I wasn't raised properly to raise properly. But I had to break the generational curse to learn that, you know, sometimes we are the problem. And we're going to pass it on to our children. And our children are going to be little assholes unless we do something different about it. And that's when we have to grow and find out who we are and find out what we, how our love language is and how our children are. Because the thing is, what we end up doing is putting our agreements upon them and making it our, their beliefs when it's not. They're the whole different people. They have different feelings, different everything. And you have to let them be who they are supposed to be. I'm raising my sons as G's though, not not like other people think. Like when you hear that word G, but um, I'm old school, right? When I when I um, when I grew up, a female like when you write your dudes over shit, she left the motherfucking room and shit. You know what I'm saying? She didn't say hi or nothing to them dudes. She like well, she might say hi, but then she left the room. Um, the conversations that people have these days, it's like they invite trouble, you know. So I grew up like that. When, even my mom, when my dad's friends came over, she left. Uh, my brothers, all of all of we all was on that G shit like that. So I, I teach my sons about that too. I like, um, you know, a lot of stuff is chauvinistic. You know, we don't really like have female leadership. You know what I'm saying? Because we're supposed to be the man. We're supposed to be the bread ones. We're supposed to be the protectors, right? And I'm like, look, man, if you like um, get, a, get a chick an inch on that, you know what I'm saying? She's going to run your ass over, man. It's just like, <laughs> with Eve and all of that, you know what I mean? I think that, you know, I mean, you're probably laughing right now, but at the same time, you know, I, we don't have robot women, but at the same time, it's, um, we keep it separate, man, because it, it's a lot going on that, um, and we're producing a lot of weak men. These dudes is pussy out here because of these new rules that, that, that the women is, is running too much shit. And then they talking about, you know, how they raising their son, I'd be like, this nigga been coddled his whole fucking life. He pussy. You know what I'm saying? You can keep protecting this dude, but you coddled this dude too long. I know you love him. I ain't saying nothing one of y'all sons, right? But you see this shit. Y'all see these pussy ass dudes walking around here right now, beating on females, all this old extra shit they got going on. Living off females, can't pay no rent, 
don't want to do nothing to sleep on somebody's couch or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Can I they tell you? Thinking about skill trades and being men. Can They're I tell you what it is though? It's not. It's not just how a mother raised, which can be. I'm not saying you're wrong because I've seen it firsthand. It it's not. Man man, can I say though. something really though? Can I say something though? It's about self love. Anybody who treats other people that any way they want to, they don't love themselves. That's all it is. They, you can blame anybody you want because at the end of the day, you have a choice. Either you keep the generational curse or you break the generational curse. It's on you. Either you want to be yeah, like your true. parents or you want your children to be like a certain I mean, way. It, it, it's about self love, but that's 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 not. It only you goes. Know, it, you, you only know, can you blame it on macaroni and cheese, right? You, you can, can cook macaroni and cheese, right? It ain't just macaroni and cheese. You know what I'm saying? So macaroni and cheese. Now you can put milk in there. You can put some black pepper in there. You can put some seasoning in there. You make it taste better than just that crab that come in the box. You ain't gotta follow that, right? But but what I'm trying to get at is, you know, when you say it's it's about self love, no, it ain't just about that one ingredient. It's it is that. though, it's because if you intent. don't love it's yourself, honest, you don't have right? honesty. If you don't love yourself, you don't think of honesty. If you don't love yourself correctly, you don't have integrity. If you do not well, love and care about, about yourself, you can't. Wait, you know what? Because they don't. You know what I tell they my They love themselves so much they, they lie about it. My friends or people that I know when they get hit on, I like to mentor people. I be like, that means he love you. Go over there and get bopped up again. That means he love you. Because when you say stuff like that to people, they think about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You won't think about it because at the no matter what, you know. Some not, people love that though. Do you realize somebody. that some people actually love being only because they live in trauma? Only because they don't love no, themselves. I'm serious with they this don't shit. Don't some they don't. Like, they don't love you themselves. You like, end up on BDSM, right? No, no. Can I say something though? Are you a male or a female? People, some people really get off on getting their ass I get and that. See, some people is conscious about it. I, other people are just. just they are conscious about it, but they getting off on it. Like, I'm gonna go get my ass kicked. I, I get you know, that. They're getting off on it. But it's because of the, because of, you know what it is? It's the endorphins it releases. Trauma releases a different form of endorphins. It's almost like crack and meth and stuff. I like getting high, but I'm not going to go snort crack or go coke or whatever the hell it is or shoot up or whatever you do with that shit. I'm not going to do it. Maybe I sound safer. But I'm just saying I'm not going to do it, but I like getting high. So at the end of the day, all I'm saying though, it's about yeah, it's about on. you, whether you care about you and what you want in your life. You can't point your finger at anybody else when you get them a certain age because at the end of the day, you're, you have a choice. I know you're old enough to know better. For sure. We're cool, I'm gonna uh mute you again. I don't. I'm, no, don't leave me up I can't shit. because at the end of the day, I'm running two pod. I'm running a podcast and an audio, and they're hearing other people talking when we're trying to have a. a bit This is my business, sir. Oh yeah. I okay. Okay. I understand. Well, it's just somebody was sitting in the dark. That's okay. I can invite wild. you back on another time where you can have an interview about about what you want if you want, and when you're not busy. Right, um, it's cool. I think it's cool. Or you can talk, right. but I have to mute you when you're talking to somebody else because I have to keep this running properly because I'm on audio. You get to see both sides. You get to see a few different sides of the world. No, I appreciate it. I understand. I've had people at the grocery store, and I still had to mute them because at the end of the day, they hear it pick it up on audio, and when you're on a podcast audio, they get a different sound. Any of y'all ever been to Texas? No. I don't mess with them. Huh? <laughs> you don't I got my beach bag out the front, front of my car in Texas. Oh, shit. I, never, I never went back there. Hey, but listen, we got the we got the same stuff going on. I was just telling Kim. I think I was I was telling you, Kim, about that about that TikTok challenge crap that happened yeah. the other day. Yeah. Now, now, but that for instance, right there, right? I mean, that's just me. I can just snatch anything out the air. <laughs> I'm a musician. But um, <laughs> what was the dude mama them at? I mean, what is his? What is it? How the hell was he raised? Like y'all was just asking a minute ago, dog. Nigga, you let somebody on TikTok tell you to go steal a car and then get in a, 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 a intentional police chase? They they, they, don't don't the they don't know what you're talking about. They don't know what you're talking about. They don't know what I'm talking about, but it was a guy that that uh that did this, right? A couple days ago. I'm at the stoplight and I almost get hit by him when they turn the corner, then the police almost hit me when they turn chasing this clown and he driving the slowest Kia ever. Right? All them Kias are slow, but 
the TikTok challenge was to steal an old Kia and get in the police chase, right? <laughs> That's and a challenge. I, when, I, when I was telling Kim about it, I was talking about how TikTok keep banning my music. But um, um, that ain't the point that I'm trying to make sure. I'm just telling y'all why I told her about it, right? But the point is that I'm making here though because it, it's, it, it relates to what y'all saying about how people raised, you know? How can somebody, I, my son is not raised like that. But social media too, you know, you're talking about an age where people think they're going to get famous by using that social media and that tick. They're trying to get one instant of fame. Yeah. You know, one spotlight of fame. That's why they're doing that type of stuff. And so, so y'all don't think that we should go over there and kick the parents' ass for raising some kids like that? At, at a certain yeah. time, it goes That's back to I them. That's what I just got done saying. If your kid grows up and smokes crack, the first thing they're going to do is blame the mama. Yeah. They really don't got nothing to do with the mom. That's what I'm saying. You know, right, but yeah, I that's true. I was a scare tactic for my kids because I knew how much they loved me and I knew they didn't want no one talking about me. But, but, but I know for a fact that she ain't done a problem, right? It, it's, it's some real stuff. Henry, repeat that. What did you say? I said you give you you are compassionate along with being militant. I believe that one hundred percent. At the yeah. same time, the worst thing for a child is hollow threats. That is what raises weak people because when they get everything they want and they know there's no consequence, even if you're screaming at them, then you end up smoking crack on the street because you think that's fine. That's true. You, learn, that's, you saw you saw you just described my ex-wife, man. My son, uh, <laughs> he, he 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 a handsome devil, right? But she she be calling his ass so much, right? And then she get mad at me when I don't, when I, she be, she like, uh, she yelling at him and all this crap. But I'm like, you just took this nigga to Florida. You just took him to Canton. Cause she from Canton, Ohio. That's where I met her at, right? Um, and, uh, um, but she calling him, man. And when, what he get with me, right? I get him four wheelers. I don't, I don't buy him stuff that you play in the house with. No, I had him driving a car at 10 and 11, bro. I'm talking about by himself. And, and now he gripping whips. You know, he 15 and he get in the car and he gone. And she like, why are you teaching him? I said, I'm teaching him all the positive stuff, how to be a man. I didn't never pass him no butt. You did. You know what I mean? So when I, he's smoking weed at school, think about it. You gave him that weed. So so when he in school, tripping and stuff, and then you see, she talking, well, how you going to blame him? I said, bitch, because you fucking gave it to him. You gave him the blunt. I didn't, I didn't share weed with her. I shared positivity with her. Can I tell you why, though? She wanted a friend. There's yeah. a There's a difference. When you're a parent... You don't treat your kid as your friend, I promise you. My son always knew that we were not we were not friends. My son knew that we were not friends. I I care about you and I'll know about you and I know who you're hanging with and I know what you like. I will know friend things, but at the end of the day, we're not friends. And that's what my son knew. And now that he's older, I want him to be my friend and, and, and it ain't happening. But I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> Real quick, while we still on that topic, because he just brought that up. I was 17 and my mom said, I know you don't smoke right now, but if you ever do decide to make your first joint with me, because I don't want you to go out here and get laced. And I still didn't smoke for the next two years after that. So, like, as much of what Tyrell is saying is like very prevalent and real because of where I come from and how I was raised. Mm -hmm. I also know that these streets look the same to us, but a different game is being played. That's true. So I can't treat my daughter like any nigga I seen raise a girl in the 90s right That's no black. i can't either man black the 90s we, we, was we, too cool with their mamas man our girls as much as we raised we as men we put women in a place where they're not allowed to think for themselves how can a woman defend herself when you strip her of all responsibilities yeah. as a kid you don't yeah. make her responsible for shit and then when she don't have accountability as a woman to a man for what a man sees as a lack of accountability you they don't look at the they don't look at the parents then they blame the woman for having a lack of accountability right so, I mean, be i'm just saying when i talk to my daughters at the same time i want her to do right at the same time, just like every other man, I don't want her out here fucking early or getting pregnant, 
Y'all yeah, don't want her out here on drugs. Y'all don't want her out here tricking and shit. We had done too much of that. Oh, send the boy to prom. Hey, have a good time. You know what I'm saying? And telling our girls, don't do nothing that I wouldn't do. Get the fuck on. Don't <laughs> tell your girl the fucking truth. It's dudes out here that don't want nothing to fuck. And you could do that shit at 12. You could do that shit at 22. Sex. If some of them bitches still fucking up at 65. Sex. So it ain't a. I would tell the people, man, if they want dog ears and shit. Get right, AJ, nothing but a number. Because you ain't never too old to be stupid. I'm going to teach you right now. Just like I would train my boy to watch out for these corners. Watch out for hating ass niggas. Watch out for females. I'm going to teach my girls. Watch out for this. Watch out for that. Absolutely. I can't be everywhere. Yeah, we train, we're training our mind. daughters, though, bro, to, um, to need dudes to straight, man. We, we got girls out here training, being trained, right, to, to, to make a man chase them, to make a man do all this old crazy stuff for them. If you know me, you're going to do this. You're going to provide. You're going to do this. I'm like, man, shit, you, you better provide for your so motherfucking like self. Right like, like, like you saying real men need to be. Man, you have a conversation with a female these days, man. Three conversations where like, she asking for some shit. I'm like, seriously, dog. I, I've been talking to females. I'm like, you know? And then, like, the third conversation, she's talking about these bills. I hang up on her ass, man. I'll be like, dog, I'm through talking to you. You know, it goes, it goes the other way with men, too. Because I, after <laughs> after two conversations with men, they all of a sudden want to see your body. All right. I'm they want please, something. I got men that don't ask me for money. Thank you. And this? money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it goes Question both the ways. Question to the whole panel. Question to the I whole ain't asking the woman for shit, but to be real. Question That's to it. the whole panel. If a kid walk up to you and tell you the sky is blue, I mean the grass is blue and the sky is green, is you going to hit it? No. Or are you going to yell at him? No. So why, when an adult say some ignorant shit, do another adult act like it's the end of the fucking world? Exactly. Like I don't give a fuck what the fuck you come with. I got songs about if that situation happened. Girls don't address me like that. But I want to say they can handle it. They can handle it. They can handle it. When you're raising your daughter, when a man is raising their daughter and you're raising your daughter right, she's never going to go and ask the man for nothing because she's going to ask that's her dad. That's what I'm saying. Person. And that's what the fuck I'm saying right oh, She's going to ask her dad. I, my daughter's never going to ask no man for, for $40. I, and and, if, you, and if you raise your whatever. son right, you ain't going to raise no self. And you ain't going to raise. He's no woman beater. He gonna know how to hey, exactly yeah, trying to get me for my check. I holler. I ain't gotta get mad. I don't gotta call you out your name. I just don't gotta respond to you no more. Exactly. Man, women, I don't know. What is it? It's not even about how it's not even about just how you raise somebody though at the end of the day, because like we said before, they have choices. That's the it. Strong character. They have, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. You still have choices. You can only blame your parents for so long. You can only say it's the problem of someone else for so long. Either you choose to break the generational curse and become your own person and take accountability. Too many people are pointing fingers. And not enough are looking in the mirror and judging themselves. Because a lot of times you are the problem. All the time you are, even if you ain't the problem, is what you going to do about it. And if what you going to do about it is complain or cry or wait for somebody to save you, at that point, you become the fucking problem. Right. I am not the problem. You can be. You have to. Everybody has to take accountability for yourself. I get blamed for so much stuff off on a regular. Like, like any time my son do something, I'm getting blamed for it. Yeah, but that's by somebody who don't love themselves. That's not by the world. Look, look, I from, look, I feel where you come Oh, you got to think about this too, Kimberly, right? What about them narcissists, right? Them people right there is worse than a person that don't love themselves. That's because they don't love you. themselves. A narcissist they don't. They don't love themselves too much. They don't love nobody. That's not properly. Self. That's not properly. Not that's correctly. That's the sad thing. That's, what, that's the misconception about yes. a narcissist. You can't love yourself if you're only worried about yourself. That's you right. You obviously don't think you enough, so you got to press and push yourself up way more than average because you don't feel like you're enough. A lot of times exactly. they're of others. 
Exactly. And that's what I was saying. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's all about proper love. I, and I'm not saying everybody has to get it. Because I'm telling you, I just started learning, my, learning to love myself correctly within the last two years. I was selling water myself down for others so much my whole entire life. And I'm damn near 50. And I just finally learned to properly love myself and put myself first. And to finally um, take accountability for myself. So I'm well, perfect for me. You a little girl. Would, would, would that word narcissism is much like manipulation? It's easy to say, but you have to realize the only reason you recognize manipulation is because you use it. That's right. So you know what the fuck it is when you see it. Just like that. Hey, hey, I got I to gotta go, y'all. Okay. It was cool. Right. Hey, before you, right, before you go, hey, where can they find your music at if you got anything streaming? Yes, sir. Um, um, it's, it's, it's on everywhere, man. And I'm going to release another song, uh, album called Grace of God Volume 2, man. If y'all send y'all an uh, email, I'll send y'all a copy of that. I'll send y'all a copy of that tonight. We can look you up T Real on anything. Yeah, yeah, but it's a whole bunch of T Reels. It's T. Put R and D C music behind my name. Yeah. I stand for real music. Um, I'm trying to put that behind my name. Hey, I gotta go, man. I got some chicken and stuff. Marinade. All right. All right. Yeah. Let's go. 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 let us go 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 let us it's cool. I just take them out so he'll get it. But anyways, um, yeah, no, it all depends on, I mean, I can see where he's coming from. I'm not saying he's wrong because, I mean, he has every right to feel the way he feels. But at the end of the day, people got to start taking accountability for their actions. The, those two young men that shot Bupak and killed him, one was 17 and one was 18. 18 year old pulled out the knife. The 17 year old shot him. Now, their lives are going to change for the rest of their lives because they had a moment where they did not take accountability for themselves also, and they lived in the moment outside of the moment. They didn't think of consequences of their actions. A friend of mine back in the day uh, started growing distance from me because, of course, drugs, some of the hardest ones they make, you can only imagine, and he got wrapped up with the wrong people, and he ended up uh, participating in a multiple, uh, like a, a murder, a group killing of someone. Another 17-year-old kid, and he got life. You know, he's he's there for life. I, I don't know if they're going to release him on good parole, but they charge him as an adult. That's a whole life wasted at 17. What a horrible thing to think about. But they were living in the second, and they weren't thinking no consequences after that moment. No, nope. terribly abused growing up. Guess what? They were all t t uh, touched by their horrible father. So yeah. it was a horrible, terrible thing. And that kind of thing breeds horrible things. I love the strong man debate. I understand that we do need to raise stronger men in this country. Now, when I say stronger characters, I normally have way more makeup on than this, but you drop me in the Canadian wilderness, I'll have you a, <laughs> a, a, a bearskin rug, I'll be a fire started in an hour, and I'll hunt, and I'll build survival shelters. What's it matter? When you get that strong character, I spent most of my life drunk as hell, so loving yeah. myself in the last five years has been a wonderful experience. Yeah. I feel tough. Well, yeah. I got it all, my kids, so. Henry. And there's that. an age that you do that at, and there's an age that you stop doing that at. Well, and, uh, you, can't and be, you, know, you can't be a roughneck with a six, seven, eight month old, a one or two year old, three year old. You can't do that. You got to show them how to love. You got to show them how to hug, and you know how to give a kiss and how to be appropriate. And you do that starting from a young age. And you know, Martel. I, I mean, he. Sh I raised him. I spoiled him right. And he is straight from the hood, y'all. He, I always tell everybody, I don't know what happened to him. Well, if, he definitely what, got hood still in him, too. <laughs> well, that's and we ain't lived in a hood a day in my life. I <laughs> raised all my kids, boo. I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, that's what guys from our generation have to understand, especially guys that's in a, like a single father position because it's a lot of hurt there that's going to go unaddressed and when people don't understand where you coming from and what you stand on, it's almost a pointless fight. But what he got to understand is that if he don't move past the hurt that go with being a single father, that 
there's ways that your kids can fall through the cracks because we don't understand. I, it took me a cut, like just until like really this year to understand like you was about to do the exact same thing your dad did that kept your relationship strained as a kid. You made up in your mind that you didn't want to be around him as much because of how strict he was versus how I was living with my mom. And I was about to do that exact same fucking thing. So it's not so much in the sense of coddling, but in the sense of nurturing, which is a very feminine trait. This is the reason why there has to be more real men to protect women because we don't understand sensitivity enough to instill those things in the kids. We can instill courage, we can instill bravery, we can instill know-how, we can instill assertiveness. Just all those things that Tyrell was speaking of, and I get what he said. Me too, I get but it too. All that, all that without love, all that shit without, like, past encouragement, like, regardless of who doesn't like you, you are loved and cared about. Yeah. That's still setting the kid. I don't care if you grow up like successful inside, you're dead. Yeah, for sure. Because you don't know proper love. And you won't be able to reciprocate that shit. Really? Because nobody grew up like that. Everybody else grew up off acceptance. You don't need it, so you don't know how to deal with people. You don't know how to give out what people crave. I didn't introduce you to Holly. I didn't introduce you to nobody because I didn't know it was you. So I apologize. But this is sub to pro. Um, this is my my really good, like, close. This is my life partner. This is my ride or die. Um, and um, he comes on the podcast quite a bit. Like, um, he's got some stuff coming out and going on. He'll get his own date coming up next. Not this Thursday, but the following Thursday. Um, but I just wanted to introduce yeah, you. Yeah. I just wanted to just introduce you, Holly. This is Sub to Pro, um, Joe. Nice to meet you. Yeah, hey, Holly. Yep. The, well, when when you were speaking, I was I put my um, shit on mute while you and Tyrell were speaking, so that y'all could be heard. But no, I agree with the vast majority of what you said because I don't. I'm all about like not abdicating power, so I put all the blame on me, which means that I don't let people bullshit me. I don't hold them to my standards. I don't let I don't I don't expect me out of other people, Thanks. but I don't let people piss on me and tell me it's rain either. Facts. Absolutely. And two, I think when you have a daughter, you know, I tell people I my daughter, my the little girl that I adopted, she was. I was pregnant when I adopted her and I knew her and I got with her father when she was four and she, her father allowed his brother to come stay with him. He was having problems at home and he did some things to his niece that wasn't right. Right. And I was in the mix of all that. And so because of it, I learned and my daughter was not allowed to spend the night nowhere. She was not allowed to go nowhere without me. There was no, for many, many years, I was like that. And even her dad's house, she could go over there, but she had to come home. Because once he got out of prison, he was still allowed around. And the, I just tell everybody that your girls, you just, these people, they, they do some kind of drug, they drink, something happened to them, and they do things impulsively. And I'm not making excuses for them. Some people are really predators. They're really nasty. They're born with something wrong with their mind. And then there's people out here that are okay with, you know, being 18 and linking up with a 15-year-old because she's developed or she's already having sex or whatever the excuse may be. So I just didn't let my daughter, she just wasn't allowed to spend the night anywhere. She was allowed to go places, but she was not allowed to spend the night anywhere. And for the most part, I had to be there, or I asked a lot of questions, and parents would get pissed at me. Like, are you? Do you have? Is there a boyfriend staying there, or do you have an older son staying there? Because you know, who's going to be? Where is the supervision going to be? Are the kids going to be in the basement? And you're going to be upstairs because I, I don't like that idea. Right, right. I was always like that. To be right. When you have kids, 
you know, you can't invite a bunch of kids to your house and go in your room and shut the door. You got right. to be paying attention to what is going on. I mean, and that's just the end of the day. That's just what it that's, is. That's so true. I would ask questions and it wasn't like I was questioning anybody's parenting. I just wanted to know, you know, what kind of safety loop my daughter was going to be in. I did the same thing, though. I did the same thing. I get it. I was a horrible neighborhood ringleader for troubled children. Definitely proprietorized too much bad shit going on. I regret it to this day. Martel was allowed to run the name. Na- I let Martel, I, when he was first born, I lived in like a rent subsided, like subdivision. Like it was just like this cul-de-sac. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, he was like three, four and I just let him run wild, you know, but he was different. My, and then once I like got on my P's and Q's and I got out of the rent, the rent subsidized area and I started renting houses and stuff like that. I still, you know, he was allowed to run the street. Martel was allowed to run around and do whatever as long as he came home when I called him. But the, my two younger ones, I was a little bit different with them. Because, like I said, I was 18 when I uh-huh. had, you know, I was 30 when I had my other kids. Yeah, a little bit. You grew up with them. Yeah, you ain't on friend status no more going around the neighborhood. You're like, I know what to expect. You're like, yeah. yeah, and I yeah. never smoked weed with any of my kids. I never drank with any of my kids. I also did not allow them to see me. You know, I, I, there was times I was drunk, and I didn't, my kids didn't see that. I, there was things I just didn't do in front of my kids. And I took them to do kids stuff, but I never took them to a house where there was a lot of drinking going on. Of course not, yeah. Smoking weed. We didn't do that. No. So... But the thing is, see, when when you when you're young, and you trust people so much, you put yourself in situations that you shouldn't, and you don't think of that because you're naive and your heart is pure and and your intent is pure. You think theirs is, and we got to teach our children. You can't expect that from someone else just because that's like I told my grandson we were walking across the street one day, and he was like, "Oh, they're gonna stop. They're supposed to stop." I said, "Just because they're supposed to doesn't mean they're going to." Exactly. You need to realize just because they're supposed to do something doesn't mean they're going to. And you think they're supposed to watch you. They're supposed to take care of you. They're supposed to care. Doesn't mean they're going to. So we got to teach and we got to um, teach our children just because you are and your intent is pure and they're really you expecting to get candy from this person. That's not what they're really expecting to do. So you have to be aware of that because you never know what situation you're going to put yourself in. I went and spent the night at my son's godfather's house. Just after I had my son, he tries touching me. I call my dad to come pick me up because I didn't heal. And I was still I was still living in an unhealed state as I got older from everything that I grew through as a child that I took and didn't take accountability for. It. And I blamed it on to my child as from being my childhood when at the end of the day, I was old enough to take accountability for it. I ended up trying to get in a relationship with this person after he already tried touching me as a child. But in my head, I didn't think that was wrong because I thought that was acceptable. Children are impressionable, you know, and that's why people prey on children. It's not just children, though. Just adults, too, sweetheart. Because certain adults that aren't properly loved and healed, I did anything for love, and it was not the proper things. No. I learned a thing about sex from a porno, Meg, and let me tell you, it was not right. Penthouse is not um, exactly translatable to what real life actually is, so... When I was 13. It's scary. I can't imagine what schools are like now. There's Tinder. There's Grinder. There's a vape pen. Probably three of them laying in the road every time I take a walk and just pick them up and puff on them. Right. Walk. It's a crazy place out there. There's weed pens and shit. You know, like, you know, we had a. I had my boys around. A, there was a mentor at church, and he said to them because he knew they were watching porn and they were young. He said to them, "He's like, hey, like that's not real sex." The only way you're getting that kind of sex is if you're really rich or famous. And I just was like, I was dying laughing because really, truthfully, that's like, that's really the, you know, reflection of porn sex. Like, that's something that you're, like, literally paying for. Those women are not going to just do that type of shit, you know. So... I, I liked the conversation, so they kind of had a, a reality check of, you know, wait a minute, this if this is what you're expecting, it can lead your mind to force something to happen during an encounter that's not going to happen, you know? It leads you down all kinds of roads. All yeah, roads. exactly. From personal experience. <laughs> it goes... Well, this the, Go this ahead. The thing, this is the thing with me, like, ooh, after the first fucked up thing happens to people 
they choose how they're going to live their life. Facts. Um, a crutch I, or a stepping stone. That's right. So, I, uh, yeah, fear is either fake, uh, face everything and rise or fuck everything and run. Right. So. Or fall. Like, I'm, I'm saying the acronym for fear. Face everything and rise or fuck everything and run. Right. Yeah. Them the only two choices you got when yeah. the most fucked up thing happens to you. Yeah. So, with that being said, all my life, I, I, I guess I start preparing myself to deal with the fact that things are going to happen beyond my control. It's about how I deal with the shit. Exactly. So, I didn't abdicate power. I, I'm After I see that you could cry and people will call you a crybaby. You can tell the truth about what happened and people will call you a snitch. All of these rules is fucked up. Doing the right thing in certain situations come with way more dire consequences than doing the wrong thing. Oh, yeah, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I just... I could cry about my father's not, you know, he's sick right now. He's not doing the best. And after everything, I could cry about that. I could grieve properly. And uh, whether I cry or not, it's just trying to process that. You can cry about spilled milk all day, but if you're actually grieving properly, then you're processing that information and learning how to adapt as it comes at you. And that's a wonderful way to feel. Because even though I'm facing all that crap. What's that? You it's okay to cry. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, to, sure. It's, it's cry. very, it's, it's very much. much. Yeah, if your parent, especially your dad or your mom, like you know, even the but, thought of my mom passing away or being sick chokes me up. Well, I, I, I feel them at the same well. time. I feel yeah. you. What you said at the same time. I do too. I feel, because I, because my brother passed, and I'm like, if I grieve properly over him there is going to be a lot of my other life that gets fucked over because of that. I'm not going to be focused at work thinking about him. I'm not going to like, I'm going to talk to my daughter about him and both of us going to be fucked up because that's her uncle. So it's like at the same time I carry that in me and it's not healthy at all. It'll be worse off if I broke down over that shit right now. So yeah, it's okay for people to go go through but I tell everybody take a knee but hurry up and get the fuck back up because the world don't stop and a lot of people get kicked when they die so that's true too it goes all the way around yeah it's like the world you know you grieving but that world is still you know they don't care no still open Myers is still open people still having birthday parties people still celebrating and having babies and you know it's like that's just your you're, that's just part of your life for one moment, and it's you're not going to be stuck there. So well, if you're going to take it personal, take it all the way personal, and no, nobody outside of you yeah. care as much as you do. Absolutely. It's so important. It's so important to develop some thick skin, and it sounds rough, and it sounds bad. And maybe I don't, it's it's good. You got to be prepared. no. You you're right. Not like that. Too many people are too yeah, sensitive, and that's why people are mad because someone said something or did something. And so instead of fighting them, they pull out a gun and shoot them. And that's what I'm talking about as far as being a, what Henry was trying to. I think the point that he, we didn't get to tell Tyrell is that real strength in a man is self control because yeah, yeah. it's real easy to punch somebody out for doing the wrong thing, it's real easy to advocate in physical violence to like defend somebody but a real man know how to use his mind in ways that it don't go to that yeah everybody in that situation is better for it and that's why it's a lot of weak men out here because too many men is moving off their emotions and moving off of how they feel instead of thinking about the end game yeah but too you have to talk about approaching a 17 and 18 year old boy those are boys, mm -hmm. and there's no reasoning with them. Right. The reasoning skills with a, a man that's in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, and the reasoning skills of a 17- and 18-year-old are none. 
but just the thing though. There's no reasoning. So, just the thing though, like if you don't treat a kid like they're stupid, you'll be amazed at what the fuck they can do and the responsibilities that they take on at an early age. If well, I'm talking about when these boys were approached in a restaurant. You have to know when to hold them and when to fold them. And I think you have to, you have to use when somebody is doing something good and they die because they're basically the trendsetter and they're learning the path. Then we all have to, when, when someone new takes over his position, we have to learn what to do in a situation that was different than him so that we can develop this skill of co collecting these people and getting them put away or getting the help that they need, but also not being killed in the long run. Of it. And the You're thing right, is, though, and, and the and thing is, though, made. everybody has to go through something to learn to be different. And that's what yeah, had to happen. But I'm that him was, having a pass, though. Wrote. Him it's having a man. pass, though. Him having a pass will make it different for the next person. Him well, having make to. Make it better. It just yes. Happens, so. Yes. So and him having to made, pass. You just, made Kim, you just made Kim's early point ring true because it's like. It, we can't, by you saying that, we can't let a Bupak Shakur uh, situation happen again. The yeah. only way that's going, the only way that's going to happen is if we unify it in that part. We can't let it somebody, yes, we can't let somebody be a Batman. We got to at least, we got to make it easier on the person that's going to take put their life on the line. Exactly, and, and he, be able to call for backup. He wasn't able to call for backup. No, he did he, though. He did. He, he hardly ever went alone. He had people with him. He he doesn't he doesn't go alone no more. But it took him it took him a while to even get to that point. Exactly. He really stepped, like he, he put his life on the line. Like I said. Exactly. So what what she's saying is uh, everything that went wrong with him uh -huh. can't go wrong with the next because it's going to be we got to right. yeah. get it right this time yep. yeah there's some people in Port here I'm still fighting about and Port here I probably not have to tell you especially you guys up above that it's full of corrupt people who are protecting all kinds of weird people around there that's they everywhere all though kinds of, all kinds of uh, see with Port here on is it's a lot of country bumpkin and mm -hmm. having sex with 14 and 15 year olds and marrying them and and that's all been a way of life for many years because it's, yeah. you know, even though it's incorrect, you need to take the time to educate these people. Like, yes, this might have been what you were doing, but this is incorrect. We have now found that when you have sex with a 14-year-old and a 15-year-old and you're trying to marry them and have kids by them, this creates a whole different kind of woman. Yeah, it's still the places and what it's still places in West Virginia where they fucking inside the fam and that shit exactly. started at an early age. That's poor here so too, though. That's poor here too. This, this yeah. ain't the wild west anymore. People need to get with the, the damn program. Yeah, because poor here. I have a friend. She, her, her um, cousin, her mom's sister, had slept with her mom's her mom's husband, and they had a baby. So she got like. A brother cousin. Yeah, that happens all the time. I have a sister cousin. It happens all the time. And she's got a she's got an uncle cousin too because the, the other sister, her mother's other sister, slept with her dad's grandfather. Yeah, so she's got a yeah. So it's you know, and, and Port Huron has a lot of women and not enough men. So that's why all that's going on. And they're not that bright, and the women are not that bright. I'm going to speak on this. I was from there, born there. They're, they're lacking something. I'm one of the only people that, like, out of my, you know, that I got the fuck on. Me too. And it's not, and it's not Me too. smart. It's not, it's not about smart because I often look at where I'm from and be like, these people don't get it. It's not about smart. Like, I said they ain't right. I didn't say they're dumb. That's not no, right. I'm saying, oh, okay. They're well, not okay. wanting to heal. They're not wanting to stop the generational yeah. curse. They're not and wanting they to break the cycle. A lot of things, yeah. You know, it's, you know, I had a best friend. And she had a she had a baby by Martel's dad, and you know, the people in that town. I remember some guy saying, "Well, she didn't do anything to me, so I don't got no problem with it." It's like, hold on, wait a minute. I'm a staple in this community. Like, what do you what do you mean? Like, you know, because we, we fell out and I've never spoken to her. And I don't stop that relationship between my son and his brother. That's his brother. Right. But go in that, go and stay behind that closed door like you have been. Yeah. Right. You know, I got that. I'll tell you this. I, <laughs> uh, 
I'm going to have a little emergency here. I don't want to stay on the podcast for so long lately. I've, I've been enjoying this immensely. Just between you and me, I don't like promoting everything, but I wrote a song called Smith Creek, which is where I'm from. And oh, a lot really? Of people, really? Oh, yeah. People think it's a really catchy, like kind of down-home bumpkin song, but it's about drinking, driving, and uh, domestic violence. That's all it's really about. Okay. So, that's always, I love Smith Creek. I'm currently. My church is right in now. Smith Creek. I, I still go to that church. So, oh, I, every, okay. every Sunday, I don't miss it. So. My grandpa used to own the Ray's Market. Actually, my grandpa Henry built Ray's Market. It's interesting. Really? Yeah. I'm a little tied to the area. Yeah. Um, I love you guys. I got a little bit, we got a construction emergency here. I've had an enormously great time talking to you. Holly, I respect the hell out of you. I would love to hear more about the hospital. And uh, Sub and Kimberly, I love you guys. Uh, we are. I have, to leave two, I have to leave two of you guys. So. Okay, that's fine. Oh I appreciate you. Sorry, I have a, I do have something going on at 9.30, so i got to get ready for that. Nope, that's fine. All right. I'm going to go. Nice meeting everybody. I'll, send me an invite, Kim. I'll get on another okay, one. Okay, I will for sure. I appreciate you, sweetheart. See you, nice Thank See you. you. Yep. So I want oh, I want to play Terrell's song real quick. You can you can head out though, Hunter, if you want to. I gotta dip out, but That's I fine. love you guys. This was a good one. Yeah, love you. Peace out, I'm gonna play his song though, and then I will end it. And I want to talk about that. But I want to talk about something real quick. I know. Death around the corner. Death. I know. Tired of shit. Death down the block. Another death around the corner. Another death down the block. Another death in the eleven. The needy set your spot. Too many times I was a pussy. Should've left your purse in the bushes. Keep on the streets. The streets ain't for nobody. When nobody was born, I knew this is the way to go about it. So I'm praying, they ain't out here playing. No fire for the supply, they out here spraying. But less than a few bucks, there's no fucks. No fuck. The celebration for life, the one your head sucks. Yeah. The only people next to you want the best of you. The heart of your chest will do. That shit's sad but true. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Well, I know vice is blessed. A curse is a rhyme and a reason for these weapons. Killing each other. If the acts ever to help us, I know. No, I'm sure it's some better. Show us something better than a man's demise. Show us something better than schemes in the line. Show us something better than a plan's devise. Give yeah, what we got and send us all to the sky. I know. But that ain't nuts, girl. So every man in the world, you but girl. But the minute you take top, the private body got us locked in instruction. Get arrested by the TikTok cops. I know. No harm, no damage. No damage. I'm stealing your earphones through a loophole called a TikTok challenge. Go ahead and show that pussy. Man, double backwards. I know. I know. And gives no kids for the rich or the poor. I know. These are dog years, you ain't know. That girl young, but what she do is like right that girl home. Oh. Daddy's acting like they ain't no. Mama's acting like they didn't go. Over the hills and through the forest. Down the same road, down the same bullshit hoe. I know. Same old, get it and go. Ain't doing nothing new, just acting new. Lost in them filters, blunt the facts in you. Exactly who wears your energy, who's matching you. Never don't give a fuck about your woman or your kids The life you live, what you do, or what you ever did Or what you gonna, just another dead body Another crazy ass last one I know I know
when y'all so ashamed to grow old. I know. It's gotta happen if you wanna see your kids grow. Living up to something on the radio, talking about they wanna die, you know. I know. We got the ground in the corner, I said it ain't so. You wanna die young, be my chest to go. But no slumber, kill yourself, don't ask for it. Remember, it's no slumber. You want it so bad, to start running. Men and even women have been locked up to fuck the woman. I used to love these hoes too, until I made a daughter, then I did what this do. I realized, all these hoes are somebody's daughter, but everybody's daughter ain't a hoe if you got a real fuck. I know. So he got this that banded on YouTube because they said he was trying to sell, um, talk about sex and exploiting people. I think what he was trying to stress is that, like social media, promote uh, these challenges. But they'll ban stuff like that. Yep, like, that's what he get, was talking about. You get kicked off of Facebook for something you found on Facebook. Yes. And he was. I wouldn't have been able to share it if I didn't see it on here, so I did. So, and he was saying that you know, um, you can't talk about waking up and, and realizing what we're we're putting upon our children, and we're out here teaching them that it's okay to do this and okay to do that, and we can't talk about that. But yet we can talk; they can we can share them doing this challenge. It's weird. It's weird. Well, I mean, that's why that's why I control me because I can always look at something and see that's fucked up. That ain't fair. That ain't right. If you over twenty five saying that ain't fair. That's right. And like I said, accountability. So I wanna shit don't, Oh, go ahead. Shit don't all I was just gonna say, shit don't go how I want it to go, so all I control is me. That's God right. So I control that. Accountability. So um I wanna talk about something before I wrap this up. I wanna talk about um tomorrow they're doing a um they're te um, pinging everybody's devices, phones, laptops, TVs, everything. If it's if it's able to watch you or able to pick up and hear you, they're pinging it. And FEMA and um, the federal government are pinging it equally. And it depends on what um, what time zone you live in is when they're doing it. Like if you're central time zone, they're going to do it at 1120. If you are um, Eastern time zone, they're going to do it at 2 something. And it's supposed to be only for a half an hour. And um, there's so many different reasons why that it's not okay. It's not okay to honestly have your phone on and let that happen. I mean, if you choose to, oh, well, they're saying it's just for um, getting people ready for different um, disasters and whatnot. So they want to be able to reach everybody in case a disaster happens. Or a shutdown or something. But this says um, that don't be surprised if your phone buzzes Wednesday afternoon. According to the press release, the Federal Communication Communications um, and the Federal Emergency Management Agencies, October 4th, will be conducting a national-wide test of the county's emergency alert system and wireless emergency alert systems. Now, that's what one says. Not everything's saying the same thing. To help ensure ensure the national um, national alert and warning systems is ready to provide timely and accurate information during the next disaster, the Federal Emergency Management Agencies FEMA and the Federal Communications Communication will conduct a national wide test at approximately eleven a.m. Pacific time. So it all depends on your area, where you're at, and what they're going to do. They're going to do it. This process involves two parts of 30-minute signals um, being sent to your radio, TV, uh, any kind of electric devices. And this it says it's similar to one sent to all um, consumer cell phones and part of the wireless emergency alert system. So it's similar to that, but it's going to be different. 
So they're going to be doing that tomorrow between 2 and 4 because we're Eastern Standard Time. Go find out. Google it. Find out what area you're in and what time it's going to happen. If you want to keep your phones on, keep them on. I'm shutting all my electrical stuff off. I'm unplugging my TVs. I'm shutting the internet off and I'm putting everything up. I don't know why they're doing it. I mean, I get it. They're saying it's because it's a natural. It's a they want to be able to get everybody ready for this um, disaster, whatever disaster may become. They're preparing people for something, supposedly. So I have no clue. I I don't know what the whole intent intent is. But at the end of the day, only to be mindful of self and worry about self and what I'm going to do for self since I don't really watch TV, listen to the radio and stuff like that. I'm unplugging all my stuff and putting it up. That's my choice. So I just want everybody to be aware that that's happening tomorrow. If you don't know about it, search it. That's the thing about me being disconnected. Uh, the thing that make me check on things like that or follow things like that is the same thing that made me like stay focused on what the fuck I got going on um I, I've seen movies about situations like this so um it's very possible and then with all the scares going around with um COVID and how they feel about a signal being able to trigger <laughs> certain things that I'm not going to discuss right now. Of course not. Um, so, like, I don't take that lightly, but at the same time, it's like I'm not batting down no hatches about this shit. Um, I'm very much aware that if a dog wants you, you can't outrun it of course not of course not Simple. but i don't I'm need here. i don't need to um be on my phone when it's happening if i choose not to that's just me i'm saying like that's that and that's what it is doing your part because like no one tried to get more people on the arc and he only took eight yeah so I just want everybody to be aware of it. You pick and choose what you want to do um, with your time. But um, Eastern Standard Time is between 2 and uh, 4. I'm shutting my devices off at 11 o'clock. And I'm not turning nothing back on or plugging nothing in um, until after 5. And I already told my people at this house that that's going to happen. And either they can stay at work all day or find somewhere to go. Because at the end of the day, it's happening. It is not my house. I can't control it. But I'm serious about doing it. So... They probably won't be here. <laughs> or they will. But I can only control self. So if they show up, I can easily leave. And leave my phone here. So that's all I'm going to do is be accountable for myself. So um, if anybody's dealing with any kind of alcohol or drug abuse or going through something and they want to heal themselves from some kind of addiction of some sort... Get a hold of our Henry that was on, um, Henry uh, Shul, and he will help you um, with the steps, and Joe will help you with the steps. Um, both of them are recovering um, from addiction, so get a hold of them, and they will help you. They'll, they'll let you know that you're not alone. They don't mind talking and listening. Um, you can find Joe on everywhere at Subdepro313 or Subdepro. Usually just Google it, and it'll pop up everywhere. Or you can look up Kilohertz Productions or PRO and it'll pop up too. So either or. Um, Henry, just go through Henry Shul. It's C-I-U-L. And um, you'll find him too. He's got his own little thing and another podcast that he does or the Henry Shul Show. So just find him. Um, if you're dealing with any kind of um, trauma, abuse, or... Um, survivors of domestic violence get a hold of my friend gina with divine order um it's a beautiful uh non-profit organization and she helps trauma victims and um abuse and um whatnot trauma survivors of domestic violence and other things she cannot give you counseling but she can offer resources and let you know where you can go get counseling from 
but they it's not about what she does too it's about who she knows so she can get in con, um get you connected with other different resources and other different avenues she'll just give you a help um you you are coming back on next Thursday, not this coming Thursday, but the following Thursday. Um, you have an event um coming up. You have something dropping that weekend. So um, where can people find you at? Uh, like I said. Yeah, I had the mic muted. I got all kind of ambulances outside. It's the D. Y'all know how it go, but um. Put your information so the, in the thing. It, yeah, sub the pro on everything. Sub the pro three one three especially on everything. Uh, yeah, sub the pro on YouTube. Sub sub the pro on everything. Follow me on uh, October twenty first. Got a show. I got tickets. Look on Instagram or Facebook and get at me there to get a ticket if you're interested shout out logan green man he the one throwing the show uh halloween in the 248 alley cat downtown pontiac october 21st i'll add us for tickets it's gonna be more than me but it's gonna be me so <laughs> come out um, and october 14th out of nowhere again like bro um uh i'm not going yeah i'm not uh i'll talk about it okay I'll talk about it next thursday yeah okay <laughs> but i appreciate you coming on much love and respect love you to pieces forever and ever love you too. and um everybody have a beautiful blessed night may your night be full of positive energy and high vibrations and if you support you we will support you Appreciate you all. I say. Namaste.